about the Petrus pyramids and how they project anterior and medial from the MSP or mid sagittal plane. And once again, mesocephalic, it's your most common skull type, head shape. The majority of you in here have a mesocephalic skull. You saying I got a big head? <laughs> I'm not saying anything else, but yeah, you know, I'm like, like, putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I said nothing, Jay. <laughs> talking about. Hey, if, that, if that's what you want to do, by all means, go right ahead. Don't be squishing my head. <laughs> you don't want anyone palpating your organs? <laughs> not particularly. <laughs> What is morph morphology? Is it like morphology? Morphology just means shape. Study of shape. The study of shape. Morpho, morphology, morphology. Yeah, it's morphin time, like Power Rangers. Rip time. Boy, I really show my age on that one. Yeah, I was like. No one, no one watched Power Rangers when they were younger. Yeah, yeah. But I was about to say. I mean, I watched. Yeah. The, yeah. I, know, I watched the OG Power Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. I so, watched the original Power Rangers. Dino and the first one. I really love like those are my jam. That's my hood. Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's my hood. <laughs> All right. Shape number two. You saw me do it though. We have the brachycephalic. Brachycephalic, like the achy, brachy heart. It's from my age again there. Oh, wow. Well, just, I, all these old references to that. Don't break my heart, the achy, brachy heart. They play every skating rink still in this head. <laughs> Brachycephalic has the distinct difference from morphocephalic, I'm sorry, mesocephalic, <laughs> in that the Petrus pyramids will project anterior and medial at a 54 degree angle from that MSP. And just to further expand on why it's different, basically the skulls will be short from front to back, broad from side to side, and shallow from vertex to base. So when we say vertex to base, that means top of the head to the bottom. So you have a short head front to back, it's very wide, and it's very short top to bottom. So it's almost like squat looking, I guess. How to describe it? I don't think anyone here has a brachycephalic skull, by the way. It's like kind of square headed. It's yeah. kind of square headed, yeah. That's a better way to put it. It's short from front to back. It's wide from side to side, or broad, like Detroit. Oh, and it's oh. shallow from vertex to base. <clears throat> it's like a flat head, flat white head, like a box, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. square like shape, like a pancake. Short from front to back. It's, okay. wide, 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 wide. it's right here. Oh. Don't, don't, don't break your brain. It's right here. Oh, God. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <Showing up. laughs> Whenever they're done writing, can you flip between the previous and the Yeah, I'll go back to Um, I'm working on it. He's gonna be half skull, half nose, or half, oh, goodness. half face. Oh, that Austin, like, like, like two face. I said this. I told you. That'll be unique. Like, like, all right, there's the mezzos about to get in. I'll just do this. Give you a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> with a picture, the skull doesn't look that different. It's just that English. 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 When you're looking down and axillary like that, it's not going to. It's a top. That's it's more so you would notice that if you're looking at someone directly. Mm -hmm. So it's like the angle is like right on that right line. Yeah. All those Petrus pyramids, mm -hmm. Petrus ridges. By the way, why are those Petrus is so important? We talked about that on Wednesday. Mm. It's a fine. No, it's a It's like right here. That's all I know. The yeah. densest area. Oh, yeah. oh, the biggest. Area. Biggest. Dense, they serve thickest area of penetration for the X-ray oh, yeah. and the human skull. Oh. Oh. And there's the brachio or brachies. 
kind of said brachiosaurus. Sure. Because you think Brachy. of brachiosaurus instead of that black ranger. I see you. I see you. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, I was already thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Although the original black ranger was the, 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 Tommy, the mammoth. No. Or no, Mastodon, sorry, Mastodon. Oh, that's not the Tommy. Tommy was the Great Ranger. Oh, my God. Franklin? He was like the Great Ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The poor guy actually killed himself a little while ago. Yeah. The actor killed himself a little while ago. He actually had a martial arts school here in Houston. He did, I went to it once. He did? Yeah. The guy that played the Green Ranger on the Power Rangers. Killed himself like Some discipline. Okay. Yes. Depression. Yeah. Was he in that new movie that came out? He's in a new movie. There's like a new new movie that I meant, came I meant out. Frankenstein. Did you He's in a new movie. Were you, uh, it's, it's coming out. It was like a fan made one. But it's, it's pretty good. All right. Last one. Delicocephalic. Delico. Delicocephalic skull. I know. Delico. Huh? It's not Delicho, it's Delico. And the features pyramids on this one will project anterior and medial at a 40 degree angle. So this skull is made long from front to back, narrow from side to side, and deep from vertex to base. So you have like a long skinny head, long thin head for your delicocephalic. And the reason we go over these is because as it says in the box here, asymmetry may not be as perfect on these different skulls. <laughs> The nose may not always be midline, so you have to think critically and adjust accordingly in those rare cases. But believe it or not, once again, still the majority are going to be mesocephalic. These are these other two types are quite rare. A lot of times they're more like almost like someone like more deformed looking, like more deformed type children and people. They have those different shaped skulls. Is this like one of those really? Really, really skinny people that have. Well, that's never, not necessarily just a skinny person. Just, it's just going to be character, characterized by a thin, tall, skinny head, <laughs> like a cone head. There's another old reference, cone heads. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Huh? A long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. It's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so yeah. stupid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Would you say <laughs> Frankenstein is breaking? Yeah, one day. I said like cone heads. Yeah. No, 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 no Frankenstein. Break, oh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I think that'd be a break. Either. Yeah. So Frankenstein's monster would like correct. I'm, I'm, I'm Frankenstein's the doctor. Okay, the monster. It always bothers me when people say that. It's not the, 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 character, the creature is not called Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein is the actual doctor. The doctor. Okay. So I got no doubt for a second there. But yes, <laughs> probably the old time old movie where his head was really tall. Probably yeah, it would fit in that description. You know, it could be argued both ways, right? What? Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster? It can't be. Is it really novel? Be. Look, you know. the source material? Study Hall, I got you. I got you. I have it on Chibar. That's fine. That's fine. We don't, we don't talk about Let me look at Mookie right in this room. All right. No, no I'll, I'll die on this hill. Now, I'll die on this hill. by the way, how many cranial bones did we have? Eight. Eight total. Which ones came in pairs? Parietal and temporal. Parietal and temporal, by the way. Temporal. Those come in pairs, left and right. The rest are all singular. So we're going to start by discussing the frontal bone. Where's the frontal bone, everybody? Let's point to the frontal bone. Can't miss it. It's your forehead. That's where I said if you're learning how to headbutt somebody in a martial arts class, you want to make sure you use that frontal bone. Otherwise, you're going to have a really bad time and bust up your face. <laughs> Cut the frontal bone very hard, very compact, and there are some very important parts that we have to review on this very important bone. Let me get my frontal bone out here. Let's see. All the parts here. Yeah, so here we go. So here's the frontal bone removed from the skull. It goes right here, by the way, just like this. Mm. That's to scale. There's little tops of the orbits you see right here. And that's what we're going to be discussing. So. There's a vertical, a vertical portion that we call the frontal squama, and there's horizontal portions. The frontal squama actually forms the, what we call the forehead, the anterior part of the cranial vault. And the horizontal portions are going to form what we call the orbital plates. So one thing to keep in mind is this will be a portion of the cranial bones that form the orbits. 
you'll find as we go through these that there are multiple cranial bones that form the border of our orbits, or our eye holes, if you want to put it in layman's terms, our eye holes. Don't say that. It's mm -hmm. orbits. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going par, to par, uh, be part of the roof of the nasal cavity and a greater part of what we call the anterior cranial, cranial fossa, which is the big opening where your brain sits in inside the skull. Now, believe it or not, this looks like a very simple bone. There are quite a few landmarks we have to label on this one bone, as you're going to see here in just a minute. Can you look towards the camera when you do that? Like this? <laughs> there you go. Let's just go ahead and get one for our yearbook. Oh, for you. Okay. What do you want me to do? Stick your tongue yeah. out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Archie's shirt next year. <laughs> 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 show about a now, one thing you'll notice as well, let's do a little review. <laughs> you'll notice these little ridges on the back here where it's been separated. What is that? Uh, That's sutures. Sutures. That was one of those sutures we talked about, correct? What Cor suture specifically coronal. was that? Oh, Very good. The coronal suture, which you can see right here. So it's all kind of making sense coming together oh. as we take this <laughs> so, skull apart like a puzzle. Is it is it at an angle like that or is it? It kind of comes up. It kind of comes up to an angle a little oh, bit. Okay. Yeah, slightly. All right. So landmarks to note. We have what's called the frontal eminences, and we'll go through these specifically: the supra orbital margins, supra ciliary arches, supra orbital foramina, and the, of course, labella. Frontal eminence is basically this broad part on our skull right here, mm -hmm. where you're going to headbutt somebody. That's your frontal eminence. Call it eminence because if you look at it from the side, it actually slightly protrudes outward. Some people have very prominent frontal eminences. Other people have very flat ones. If you've not noticed what different people's head shapes, some people have a big forehead, some people have a flat forehead. But that is the frontal eminence. The supraorbital margin, supraorbital margin, is it missing on that diagram? No, it's not, okay. I didn't see the word. Supraorbital margin right here, guys, is the, uh, the superior border of our orbit. Supraorbital margin that forms the superior border of the orbit. So, like, eyebrow area? No, no, this is the top of your orbit. So if you palpate right here above your eye, you'll feel right, the yeah. border of your orbit. So mm -hmm. just below it. That's the super overall margin. I'm glad you said that, Jay, because that's where people make the mistake here. Because mm -hmm. after that, we have the superciliary be... arch. Mm -hmm. That is where your eyebrows sit on. The superciliary arch. If you palpate your eyebrows, you can feel that arch. Supraciliary arches. So this is super ciliary arch. Yes. And that's found right here. Mm -hmm. Or right here on this okay. little model I'm holding. And that's what your eyebrows sit on. Super ciliary arches. Then we have the supra orbital foramina. There are two little holes. It's not actually on this model, but if you look on the picture, there's two little foramina for vessels right above your orbits. That's a supra orbital foramina. We have a left and a right. There are two of them. And I can actually feel mine right here. Sometimes you can feel that little foramen. You say it's the vessels above. It's just an area for vessels to travel. And of course we have the glabella. Where's the glabella, everybody? That's a very important landmark you'll start using next week in lab. The glabella in between the eyebrows. So that is our major landmarks to note on the frontal bone. Do I need to be able to label these on a diagram? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Can I see these on an x-ray? Yes, I can. So we got to start knowing these. Yes. Question. Oh, which one was the superior border of the orbit? Which one? That's going to be the supraorbital margins. The mar okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. So, Yeah, if you, if you put your finger like above your eye, like don't poke your eye out, but you know the border of your orbit, you can feel the whole circular border, we're trying out this upper portion right here. So under the eyebrow? Under the eyebrow, yeah. yes. How do you distinguish between the foramen and the margin? The foramen and the margin? The supra uh, orbit. What's a, foramen? What's a foramen? Foramen is a... Uh, it's a hole, right? It's a hole. So foramen, margin is just basically talking about the area the eyebrow sit on. It's, it's like, a little, like a little ridge. Mm -hmm. Here, y'all can pass this around. Y'all want to look at that closer. Um, I, I'll try to pull death in this video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to 
too much loud music as a young person. Oh, wow. <laughs> You know, whenever I was a teenager, it was all about putting subwoofers and all that loud stuff in your vehicle and blaring the music. So I blew all my ears. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What else? I'm enjoying this, guys. That's all we had to do in Louisiana was just suit out our vehicles, you know, speakers and subwoofers. You had, you had the music in your truck? Yeah, I did. Oh, oh really? You had one of those cars? Yeah, a fresh uh, 98 Corolla. A little pickup truck. Just right. last year. Uh, you have a picture? It was a when, it was, when it was hot, when it was new. I, mean, I had a little S10 uh -oh. that I added ground effects, so it looked like a phone rider. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 no. no. I had the, Mr. Uh, the, I had the the little flashy CD player with a little graphics on it. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, so it was like, okay. I thought it was. You know, I used to be I used to be a young person. I kind of still think I am. I'm trying to say, I'm a dad now. You heard that? What? <laughs> He's like, I'm an adult, okay? Don't, 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 don't diss the minivan. When you have a lot of kids one day, you will love the minivan. Don't you dare diss the minivan. I drove that minivan with pride. Is that a thing? That minivan is not, yes, sir. Even leather seats. Oh! Oh, you messed up. You messed up. Don't get me started. He said, don't talk about my minivan. Hey, hey. Don't talk about my minivan. Now, I can say that. Yes. Is that the, the eyebrow itself? It's, it's not the eyebrow itself. It's just that's just the way to remember. It's where the eyebrow sit. It's actually just, it's a ridge, like a prominent ridge. Like if you poke on your eyebrow, you can feel it. Yeah. All right, guys, let's move on. All right, keep note. Anytime you see the word sciences, I want you to put a star on it because if there's anything the registry is guaranteed to ask every time, 100% of the time, it's always going to go back to sinus cavities. The frontal bone contains the frontal sinuses, obviously. Makes sense. And that's found between what we call the two tables of squama on each side of the MSP. In other words, there are two cavities side by side in the frontal bone. You have sets of frontal sinuses in both cavities. Now, you might notice I said sets of frontal sinuses in both cavities. We'll talk more about that when we get to the sinuses themselves, but every person has a different number of frontal sinuses. Cool. Some people might have two, some might have three, four, five, six. There are different numbers of frontal sciences. Just in, there's no difference in how your sciences work, which is people develop them differently in different numbers. That's for the frontal sciences. Is now, it, yep. Is it with their development, like what they do in life? Or I don't think it, so. It's just random. One of those random genetic things. So it's not like. It's like we don't control our eye color, our hair color, it's just all genetics. Yeah. What about those people that just stay underwater for like like dumb amounts of time? That's more of a lung thing than sciences. <laughs> now articulations. What does the frontal bone articulate with? This is where this really screws people up. And I've always had trouble remembering these as well. But we do need to make note that each of these bones have articulation points and we need to know exactly what they are. Oh, now frontal bone specifically, it articulates with quite a bit. <coughs> the right and left parietals, the sphenoid, the ethmoid, the nasal bones and the zygoma. Zygoma are plural. There's left and right zygoma, by the way. Those are the two facial bones it articulates with. And one thing you can guarantee when it comes back, when we come back to cranial bones, remember I said the sphenoid bone articulates with all. Mm -hmm. So you can always guarantee sphenoids will be in your answer choices for cranial bones. There's that anchor in the middle holding them all together. two cavities in the frontal bone. There's two cavities that hold the frontal sinuses, or what we call tables of squama, as it's set on there. 
We doing all right so far? Is it in the front? What's the two cavities with? There's two cavities that hold the frontal sinuses. Yeah, it's a fancy way of saying cavities. Not the kind that get in your teeth. Little openings. It's all dental hygiene. Actually, keep doing that. We're gonna pay for it later. Literally pay for it because it's very expensive. Even with insurance. I've only had one cavity my whole life, and so I would never have another one again. Okay, we ready to move on? Yeah. We're now going to talk about this little thing here. The ethmoid bone. Kind of a funny looking bone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, it kind of looks like a bird or a bat as well. Kind of like the sphenoid. Kind of strange looking. I got two here, so y'all can pass one around while I talk about it. This is the ethmoid bone. It is a small cube-shaped bone. It consists of, these are the major landmarks, even though we have a lot more than just what you see there. We have the horizontal plate, the vertical plate, and two light spongy masses that we call labyrinths. These labyrinths house the ethmoid sinuses. And by the way, when you have a snotty day, when the spring, the spring pollen starts hitting you and you start having that runny nose, it's coming out of your ethmoid sinuses. So where do you think the ethmoid is located? Mm -hmm. right, but like right, like right about here. Go behind my nose. It's like that's in my picture. It's like, hmm? it's like that's in my picture. Like this. Fib is looking straight at you like this. That's the side. That's the back. That's the front. That one looks a little different than this one, doesn't it? Yeah, the front looks like a skull. Let's see. It's throwing me off. You got it right, like this. Oh. All right, now you'll see there are some other words on here, and we do need to know these. These are some very important landmarks on the ethmoid bone. The uppermost one, as you remember, I was joking about that last class. Really great girl's name if you have a daughter, you know. It's one of those really gold star unique names, Krista Galley. A pretty girl's name. The Christigalli is that superior point that you see at the very top of the ethmoid bone. That's right here. Not as easy to see on this model, but you can see it very clearly on that model there. We can make out that Christigalli very nicely on our x-rays. It looks like a big long horn sticking up, depending on the angle that we put on the tube. We also have, like I said, the ethmoid sinuses found within these labyrinths right here. We also have, and we're going to break all these down further, what's called the superior and middle nasal concha. Superior and middle nasal concha. That's these little labyrinthy holes you see. Superior portion is a superior nasal concha. Bottom is the middle, not inferior. Inferior nasal concha connect down here is a separate facial bone. We'll come back to that. So keep in mind the superior and middle are found in the ethmoid bone. The inferior is a separate facial bone that we're going to talk about. Good thing to make note of. Air cells, basically it's another way of saying that's where the ethmoid sciences are. Okay. And the medial orbital wall is just the sides, the sides of that ethmoid bone. Perpendicular plate is the opposite long horn coming off that bone. The top is the Christigalli, the bottom is the perpendicular plate. Now why is the perpendicular plate important? That's part of your bony nasal septum, right here guys. So when you look, well don't look up at anybody's nose, but if you look on an x-ray, you're looking through the nose and you see that long, um, that long plate, the top portion of that is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So that's a really important thing to go ahead and write down. The ethmoid bone, or the perpendicular plate specifically, forms the upper half of the bony nasal septum. The ethmoid bone, and specifically the perpendicular plate, forms the upper half of the bony nasal septum. That's the perpendicular plate? That's the perpendicular plate on the ethmoid bone. Forms the upper half of the bony nasal septum. What did you say of the labyrinths? The labyrinths are just another way of saying that's where you're, it's basically what houses the ethmoid sinuses. It's all those little holes you see on it. Say again? Forms the what? It's about the perpendicular plate. Yeah. So the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone forms the upper half of the bony nasal septum. The lower half, we'll talk about facial bones. 
And if you ever want to know where all your boogers are held, actually, no, I'm just don't want to talk about that. I'm just being gross. That's not where your boogers are. Your boogers are just in your nostrils. And boogers are just dirt and bacteria getting caught up in your nose. If the mucus traps them and hardens them, and that's where you get boogers from. Out of a science fiction. <laughs> Uh, it does, doesn't it? It, it looks like it doesn't it look like human, does it? Yeah, it's like sci-fi. Looks like the bat I rescued. Doesn't look like the bat I rescued. Y'all just gotta bring up that stupid bat. Uh -oh. oh wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Remember, it's Friday. I'm unpredictable. Friday, you never know what's there. How much is it? All right, guys, so where's it located specifically? The ethmoid bone is, is located between the orbits, right here, basically behind your nose. What's it form? The anterior cranial fossa, the nasal cavity, yes, still part of the orbit, the orbital walls, and like I said before, the bony nasal septum. Okay, so now, Ribby, Ribby form? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that. The horizontal portion, that little model that you're passing around, guys, that long ridge on top, that's found right here, by the way. There's that crystal galley. There's a ridge on top. That's what we call either the horizontal portion or more commonly called the cribriform plate. Cribriform plate. As we'll see in a second, there's a vertical portion. We're gonna call that the perpendicular plate. So some more important anatomy to make note of, of course, still that crystagalli, cribriform plate, and by the way, that is the most common word to use, cribriform plates and perpendicular plates. This is a side view, by the way, looking at it from the side. So what is it? Cribriform? Cribriform is the top ridge. Like if you're looking at it from the side, which we're doing right here, this ridge on top is that cribriform plate. Below that, like you put your fingers around it, side to side, this big flat portion has the perpendicular plates. Yes? The crystal galley is the part of the cribriform. It's just on top of it. it Truths off the top of it. Looks like a horn sticking up. And this is if you're looking down at it right here. You're looking straight down, if it was below you. There's that cribriform plate on the sides. There's that perpendicular plate kind of protruding forward right there. There's the air cells and there's the crystal galley. That really looks like something from an alien movie. It's like. It does. Egg sacs. Isn't it weird that it's that egg sac. inside of, of you know, my face? It's kind of hard to believe all that forms your skull. Yeah, you just exactly. think of a skull and a skull, there's so many different parts that it it's just connects all together like a Lego. You know, like Really sick and twisted like a <laughs> all right so what is important about that cribriform plate it's going to contain multiple foramina little holes for transmission of the olfactory nerves y'all heard of that before mm -hmm. olfactory nerves mm -hmm. right it's a lot where all your senses come from mm -hmm. so those nerves in your brain that control your senses the olfactory nerves they're gonna go through that perform plate. The crystal like I said, that's the top, that horn sticking out the top of that ethmoid bone. It's a conical projection at the anterior midline of the cribriform plate. And it's just a connection point. That's the only service, that's the only purpose it serves. Perpendicular plate is also called the vertical portion. That's gonna form that superior portion of the bony nasal septum we just talked about. So I say that the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone is the upper half of the bony nasal septum. That's what that's referring to. It can also be called the vertical portion. Vertical portion. And we'll stop on the next slide here. We're bringing so into our project. That last bit in red is what you mentioned earlier? Yes. Okay. So much stuff on one tiny little bone. And you can see this on the x-ray? The majority, yes. Yes, you can.
Yeah. So, so if, like this is looking straight at it from the front. Mm -hmm. Perform would be going down these narrow alcoves side to side. Mm -hmm. Perpendicular is on the bottom. see this bone extremely well when you're doing CTs, CT exams. You'll really show those air cells especially. So yeah, and this can get fractured. You know, someone gets punched in the nose. Um, it's not necessarily that nasal bones get broke. Sometimes that, that bony nasal septum is what get bro gets broke or fractured. So then is it common for the pyramids to be like collapsed? They can collapse, yes. Yes, they can. Sure, um, so if it was like a CT like this, just like maybe every three years or no? Not really. I'm just really worried about something. Don't, don't pay all that money. It's very expensive to get a CT, even with insurance. Trust me. It was 10000 for mine on my hand. That's the bill I got for my wife's CT with insurance. Yeah, and and they're like, that's what the lawsuit is like for. I need enough to cover it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how much they charge for those. All right, last slide, guys. Those labyrinths are going to contain those ethmoid sciences we talked about. Make note of those. We're going to come back to those later. The walls of the ethmoid bone form the medial walls of the orbit. So that's the area right here, kind of where your tear ducts are. The medial walls of the orbit are formed by the ethmoid. And the lateral walls are going to be the walls of the nasal cavity. <coughs> and of course, it also contains those little projections that we call the superior and middle nasal conchi. Once again, it only contains superior and middle. The inferior nasal conchi are going to be their own separate facial bones that we'll talk about later. Articulation points are going to be the frontal, the sphenoid, the lacrimal, maxilla, and the molar. So it articulates with two cranial bones, three facial bones. Right. If you, as you finish writing, guys, you want to take your first break really quick. We will reconvene so at about um, nine oh five, and we'll start our little head model project. Shield? Is shield? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I remember like a blanket. Yeah, CT does. You know, the shielding.